All right, this morning, let's look at the page latch, page IO latch X weights. A couple things about this one is number one, <clears throat> unless it's accompanied by a lot of other weights or unless I see this being much higher than normal, in general, uh, there's not a lot of uh, concerns with this just because this can be, you know, something that's normal to see. Now, again, you have to be familiar with your system and, and understand what's normal and what's abnormal, but uh, for the most part, this isn't. Uh, the biggest concern in the world if, uh, depending on how something's been architected. So essentially what this is, you'll notice that I flipped the disc and the uh, the RAM there. It's created on the buffer when a page is required uh, by a request that is not present in the buffer cache. Fundamentally, basically, this is your disk to memory weight on the data move from one to the other, okay? So there are three pieces that I tend to pay attention to. The number one is, of course, disk performance. And note that that is different for OLAP and OLPP in mixed environments, right? So, you know, your fastest disk or your best disks in an OLPP environment are generally going to be allocated uh, to things like your log, whereas your, uh, which that which I should say may not be the case for your OLAP environments where you may have your fastest disk allocated to, you know, for instance, tempdb or uh, your data files, okay? Same thing here with memory. I'm going to pay attention to the memory fact is is that there are systems out there that um, I call it the the data to memory ratio is absurd um, well, I'm trying to think of how to put this but just if you take the total data size and you take the total memory that's available on a server there are just ratios that if you see them in a certain um, if you see it in a certain ratio, you know there's huge problems. There's going to be huge problems with the system because basically what they've done is they've allocated all kinds of disk space, but they didn't think about, okay, still things have to be read from disk and stored those pages stored in memory when you know uh, transactions are taking place. And then going back to the third one, which is scale. Of course, scale matters, right? You know, the if transactions are going to occur in huge batches and things of been scaled to be in one table or in one database or I mean that's that's going to bottleneck out so where the bottlenecks are going to be from the disk the memory and the scale is probably uh, where I'm going to start optimizing on if I see this and a, a few others big uh, two other big pieces would be memory CPU weights um, that would be one that would be a concern as well as uh, some of the disk uh, writing operations so another one that I would look at here is evaluate your T-SQL and architecture uh, for instance, as a case in point, imagine that you're removing data in massive batches. Let's say you're deleting a million records, but you have no architecture in place to read from disk to memory efficiently. So you're deleting a million records, but there's no way for SQL Server to get those pages efficiently. For instance, there's no um, index on your where clause. So you're deleting a million records and you're doing where ID is greater than, but that greater than it doesn't matter. It can't be sargable because you have no index on that column. Well, how is it going to do that efficiently, right? I mean, think about what that's going to be. It's going to be a table scan. Um, and the same, by the way, is true for updating. And the other thing about that as well that I just explained is that you want to also be looking at, do you want to allow a delete in a million record batch? I mean, it's a pretty massive batch, right? And you have to think about what's the effect of that delete on both the disk and memory, right? because it's going to have to read it from disk, it's going to have to get those pages memory, and then it's going to have to sit there and do the delete operation. And that may not be the most efficient thing to do. Uh, one of the reasons why I tend to be very particular about sizing my logs um, to a fixed size and not allowing massive operations in environments, and a lot of environments get all, you know, not all of them, but a lot of environments. Why do you do that? It forces developers to think in batches because when an environment starts becoming larger and larger, they're going to have to do that anyway. They're going to have to scale things. They're not going to be able to do delete star anymore or update star, right? They're going to have to start thinking in a, and okay, I'm going to only update this 10,000 records at a time or whatnot. And so the earlier you can get an environment to commit to that type of thinking, the better off you'll be. But if you don't early on, what's going to happen is then it's going to move from, you know, let's say a couple of gigabytes to a couple of terabytes to a couple of petabytes. And then what's going to happen? Well, now they're going to be deleting a petabyte of data, right? Well, that's not okay. That's going to just crash and burn. And so that's why you want to think and scale sooner than later, because you can scale things out if you think and scale earlier uh, very easily. So those are just some of the things that I look at. Uh, the key here, again, with page IO latch X is that 
you are looking for the disk to memory. So you want to start there. You want to make sure, check your disks, check your memory, and then of course, check your scale and your T-SQL.